Yes, sir, baby, on the radar live from Invite Only Studios. We got some drinks flowing. I got my, it's a Friday when we're recording this. I got my guy Keto here with me. What up? What's up? What's up, bro? How you through, bro? Yo, first of all, I gotta, I gotta introduce you properly. Yeah. Artist, producer, songwriter, yeah. artist as also like in a painter slash artistic sense. I'm, I'm just a creative guy. A cre a, just a creative, <laughs> a creative guy. The, the mastermind behind a lot of your favorite Afrobeats records. We're gonna get into everything today. We got a lot of stuff to talk about. You know, this is, is this your first time in New York? No, this is like my fifth time. Your fifth time in New yeah. York. But, you know, I wanna check in with you. How have you been over the past year, you know, uh, during this pandemic and with everything kind of going on in the world? Um, I've been chilling, just trying to, you know, take it one step at a time, you know, absorbing the new, the new world we're living, mm -hmm. trying to, you know, Create every chance I get, you know, trying to appreciate life even more because, you know, the pandemic is showing that, yo, so long life, you know what I'm saying? So that's pretty much what I've been about lately. What do you feel like was like um, the biggest lesson that you've learned about yourself or you know, lesson and, and maybe something that you learned about yourself over this past year? Pandemic, I, I really think it was a really dope year for me, to be honest, because mm -hmm. I got to like, you know, there's a point in your life where you have to like actually grow and you got to like really see yourself growing as a person. Like, so I think this pandemic has been like a pure room to really like develop myself mentally, especially, mm -hmm. you know, really understand more about people more than myself. You know what I'm saying? Like try to see things from people's perspective more. You know what I'm saying? Like I literally like, I had like a whole two, three months of like just sitting down researching on, you know, how to be, a better person for other people. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's really what I've been doing. And outside of that, my music, of course, I've been cooking up, making music. And uh, in what way did you, I guess you want to become a better person for other people? You know, you said you said you spent some time researching yeah. and whatnot. But in like in like what sense? Like in the um. So I mean, I don't want to sound like some weird guy that <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But like, I really go on Udemy okay. and I search for like courses and like you know, self-development and like, you know, communication, you know, especially me coming from Africa and being in the world like America where you meet all sorts of people, different right, types of right, people. Right. You know, everybody's coming from different worlds. You have to like really know how to, you know, convey certain things to certain people without sounding mean or sounding like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of stuff you have to actually understand my world too. Without mm -hmm. understanding. So, but yeah, I really like take time out. I like take courses, mm -hmm. you know, Apart from that, I've been working on like creativity, like I've been, you know, I'm a very creative person naturally. I, I like to like explore every angle of creativity and, you know, for the longest time I've been just doing it with music. So now I'm doing like visuals and fashion and like all this stuff. You know? So, yeah. yeah I mean, even before this interview, we were talking about like the, 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 the parallels between uh, some of Gucci's new line and, and, yeah. and the Too Late Too Late album cover, which, yeah. you know, it, it, the project is out now. Super dope! Congratulations. Thank you. This is like a, this is your first kind of full body work as a, as an artist and and overall, right? Like, come. Yeah, this is my first body of work ever. You know, I've I've, I've always wanted it to be very organic. I always, I always wanted to take my time to do it. Not forced. Yeah, not forced. I didn't want you know I didn't want a situation where I drop it and nothing happens and people just listen. Because I know a lot of people producers do that. They just drop and nobody listens to. You, you know, I, I never want that situation for myself. So. I'm so glad it happened the way I wanted to happen because now it's going crazy every day. People calling me, you know, numbers going up and stuff. You know, like that. The project and you know the project is dope. Why did you feel like now was like the right time for you to um, come out the gate with this project as not only as a as a producer but as an artist yourself? You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, it's just the feeling. You just feel it when the time is right. You know what I'm saying? It's just you know, it's a combination of events of things that have happened to you and just you just feel it like okay i think it's time to go i think it's time to do this so for me i just feel was just this is the right time you know how did when it came to you know picking the people who will be on it um how did you kind of go about that because obviously i'm sure a lot of these things are are organic are people that you of course have already worked with yeah um but when it came to kind of reaching out and, and crafting the track list for this project um, how did you go about that? Cause, that, cause you know, you, you're expressing a lot of, about, about how creative you are. So I know for yeah. you that this, this was something that you took a lot of time and effort to kind of make sure it was, it was your vision a thousand percent. Yeah. For this project to be honest, it was like half organic and half, 
you know, strategic. Like, I really want this to happen. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, for some records, it was just vibes. And it just, you know, it just happened. We were in the studio cooking up, and that happened. Like, show with love featuring Pharaoh. And for the other records, it was like, okay, I, I have this record that started, and I think this person is going to be dope on this. I really want this person on this. You know? It was just like that. It was like a brand of both things. You know? So, and what I love about this project is that you, as an artist, you also curated, like, the album cover. You created it with, and, and it was so dope because of all the different colors that were incorporated into it. With yeah. that, what did you kind of want to accomplish with that? Because I know we were talking a little bit before the interview also about, like, colors and kind of what makes what makes things pop, too. Yeah. So, I really, being my first album and my first project, I really wanted something disruptive. Disruptive. You know? <laughs> disruptive, yes, yes, yes. I, I wanted something... That people would just look at, me, you know, they would just be like, "Ooh, what's that?" You know what I'm saying? Even without trying to listen to the album, they find themselves clicking on that art. Like, "Oh, let me see this. What's called? It looks right." Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And right now, if you if you're really big on you know on the on the graphics world, they'll tell you monochromatic is like hot right now. Like that's what if, that's what's in trend right now. Keep it monochromatic. Keep it simple and clean. And that's what a lot of people were telling me. A lot of my friends are like, you know what? I don't like grooves naturally with the music, so I think I'm going to stick to that. I don't like grooves with the art too, you know what I'm saying? So I actually just went with what I wanted to do, and I'm so happy people like it, because regardless, people really like it. It really gave me, like, the NFT yeah. vibes. It felt like like I was looking yeah. at something that, that, that you could also, you know, bid on online and, and own a part of, too, you know what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly. It just wasn't, like, I know how, like, on, certain NFTs have, like, movement yeah. to it. And I was, like, I, I was, like, the, like, most part, the most important part of the art was I really wanted to make something that you know, that looks powerful, mm. you know, and if you look at the art, I, I look, the old theme of the old concept of the art release, I had like a first real out art that was like a man in space, mm. right? And then before I announced the official album art, I had that. And the idea was just, the if you listen to the project, I wanted, I really fused dance and EDM. Mm. Not EDM per se, but like dance music. But like kind of like the little beats house, that, you know, yeah, like some yeah, dance yeah, yeah. folks type, situation mm. but very subtle in a way that Africans can still understand it you know right. so I didn't want to go too deep into that back so I really wanted that influence on the art because I wanted the old albums dance 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 you know what I'm saying mm. so I really wanted to create that vibe of you know man in space you know super superhero see type vibe but still keep it royal keep it African but still keep it global and international it's just a blend of different, you know, what I'm different styles. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, I but really you touched on the things that. on like the subtle, the uh, subtle aspects. You yeah, know what I'm saying? See the hand, the hand that was green. I had like, you know, gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Kari. I, I had that as a concept that okay, green and gold just speaks for you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I want that hand to be like that, and the face. I wanted that face to have that element of, you know, of avatar or like some mutant or something. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I really wanted that vibe. And you know the metallic jacket and you know the metallic suit and tie. Okay, there was no tie, but like strings and stuff. You know, it was just all combination of ideas I wanted to like portray with the vibe of the music and the art. You know, and I'm happy I was able to get it done. You know? No, a thousand percent, yeah. and it came out. Yeah, shout, shout out to the graphic designers that worked with me on this. Ah, it was crazy. We went back and forth. <laughs> how long? How long did you go back and forth with them on on, on the cover art? What? I had five graphic designers working this stuff. <laughs> I only had one. No, but my <laughs> thought was going crazy. We're like, he got fed up. Like, oh. I was like, no, I want what I want. Like, I'm that way with music. So I'm like, yo, if this is not turning out the way I want it, then we're not going to use it. I'm like, we're just going to do another photo shoot and just keep it busy. So we had it up until the day of release. Oh, my God. Until we got this art. Really? Like, wait, where, where's that right now? Like, we were tweaking it, tweaking it. And we're changing stuff and all like, you know, I'm not I'm not satisfied yet. I don't feel uh I don't feel in my heart that this mm-hmm. is it. Till the last day before release, actually like 24, 28 hours before release, we finally got it and I sent it to Sony Music. They uploaded this Apple Music or like, guys, this is we've never done this before. It might not reflect on Apple Music. I'm like, I don't care, just put it. <laughs> Just make sure this is what's on. There. It'll be there eventually. But just yeah, make sure that that's what's going to be. That's what's gonna be there. Make sure that's the end product. You know what I'm saying? Make sure that's what's, what people are going to see 10 years from now. I was so satisfied with that when I saw the final one. Cause it was so crazy. I had, to, I had to go on YouTube myself, looked for the answer to the feeling I wanted on, on the art. Mm-hmm. 
I sent the link to the last graphic designer. I was like, you know what? If you can get this done for me, I'm sending you $1,000 right now. And he does that work. <laughs> you never you seen a graphic designer move so fast. You never, he was like, he's like, he, bet, say that. <laughs> he had complained so many times, he was fed up. I was like, you know what, bro? If you can get this done for me right now, I'm sending you $1,000. He said, okay, you know what? How long did it take I him to do it? it? So I sent him a link, a YouTube link of a tutorial, some shit. I was like, right, you know what? I think this is what I'm looking for. So try and apply it. So he applied it and he finally got it to where I wanted to be. And he's on the thousand dollars. I had to do it because, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> How long did it take him to do it? No, he spent, the last phase that I needed, think, the last thing that I needed on it was mm -hmm. that filling all over the, the, the texture. It took like an hour to do that. Oh, wow, okay. Well, he did it and, you know, he got to where I he got it. He got, he got busy yeah, with it. Yeah, it really went to, to work for God. Like, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Nah, I love that. And, you know, so I wanted to also get a little background about yourself because obviously being someone who has crafted, you know, so many sounds in, in the Afrobeat genre, I wanted, to get, yeah. I wanted to, to give the people a little sense of where you come from. So if you could please tell me where, where you come from and how you kind of first got into... You know, producing. I know. I know. Painting was an early thing for you as well. Yeah. But how did we for how did we kind of get to this point today? Um, like I said earlier, it's, it's a combination of events. You know, mm -hmm. I I started as a as I started as a I was the best art student in my school. Literally, I was the best art student in my whole school. Mm -hmm. And I really loved painting, drawing, and all this stuff. And while I was in school, this was high school actually. But while I was in high school. I remember I started picking interest in music. I started doing karaoke. I started, you know, following the DJs. The seniors were like the DJs of school, so I started helping them like lift their speakers when they need to set up <laughs> and do all that stuff because I had interest in it. So at some point, there's something in Nigeria called cultural dancing. Okay. And that's like a very big part of our tradition back home, and that really is a good foundation if you're trying to learn like traditional music. Mm -hmm. And that's that plays a big part in Afrobeat. So I had to learn how to drum. Like you see them drums, like you see people drumming. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I had to learn that. Wow, wow. like 13, 12 then. And you know, when I was 14, I found DJing. I started DJing and I was really good at it. At a very young age, people really liked me DJing. And you know, I DJed for the longest time. You know, I, I made like, I started making money off DJing at a very young age. So I remember when I got into college, I I used, I told my mom to stop sending me money for, for like pocket money and feeding and all that stuff because I was good. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because so, I was making DJ money every weekend. Like all, this, all the departments of school when they have, and when they have parties, like department parties and stuff, they used to call me like, yo, we want kid to DJ and they pay me. So I started doing that and then I remember I built my first studio. I used my kitchen and my dorm to make a studio in college. Okay. So it was like, the whole thing was just developing gradually and I was, while I was in college, I made a song that became like a really big song, continental, like con continent wise, it was really big. And that was uh, Rihanna by Orezi. And that really, you know, showed me that I can actually do this production thing for real. Like, you know, I can actually focus on- You got a future. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I took production serious. I started making beats that, you know, I started sneaking out of school to go to Lagos. To <laughs> to cook up with artists and stuff. I met David, we made songs, you know. It was just like that, you know. It developed and morphed into, you know. To where, where we are today. Am, where I'm at right now, yeah. So you and David go way back too. Yeah, like we've known each other for like eight years now. Wow. Yeah. So how, you know, we're, I want to get to that relationship, but also I just kind of wanted to like, because, you know, he's not the only, you've worked with so many artists, you know, of course some other notable names are, are WizKid, Mr. Easy, yeah. um, from, from Africa, and you are also very much responsible for a lot of the sound that is popular today. You know what I'm yeah. saying? There are a lot. There obviously are other producers who are who are just as important. But you have created, you know, something that has kind of taken over the world. When you think about that, and you think about everything that you've accomplished so far, how does that like make you feel that like you've helped bring this genre, you yeah. know, to something that was prevalent over here and prevalent, you know, in the West? But you've taken it to like a whole new place. You know what I'm saying? To the point where it's like, you know. DeVito is like one of the biggest artists in Africa, but also in the Americas too. Okay, so um, for me, I feel blessed. I feel, I feel like, uh, I feel like this is like a dream come true, <laughs> you know. And I feel like, for the most part, I feel like I'm most excited about the fact that 
or I'm most proud about the fact that I'm able to lay a foundation for a whole generation. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? So that's yeah. something you can't buy. You get what I'm saying? And also that the fact that my name is in history, in the history books, like that's untouchable. You know, that's something that I'm super proud of. But at the same time, my real goal is to just make sure producers and creators back home really get, you know, the global attention they deserve because you need to go to Africa and see how creative people are. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like the world doesn't realize that it's, it's like so much creativity that and the, the kind of creativity that's back home, you know, it's different from the rest of the world because in the sense that people are very creative and very hardworking. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't just, just, oh, I can create, I can make some potion and that's it. No, <laughs> they create and they put so much work and so much passion into it. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I still, till today, I still work with creators back home. I don't just say, oh, because I'm in America, I'm, you know, I'm working with, you know. Only American artists. Only American yeah. cool people. I don't want to do stuff. <laughs> you know just because you work, you're you like, know, just because I, I work with, like, Ray Schreiber doesn't yeah. mean I can't work with, you know. What, yeah. what I got to learn is that, you know, a lot of people I've worked with here, my drive is, like, ten times bigger than theirs. So, at some point, it starts to look like, now. Nah, it's like I, I start to look like a bad person because <laughs> you feel a little crazy. <laughs> you feel a little crazy because you're you're different. I'm like, yo, I want this shit. I want this to go hard, and everybody just so like, yeah, you can go out. I'm like, no, let's go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So you know, you have to always keep. You know, I feel like I just want the world to really see how African creative work and how passionate mm-hmm. people are. You know how you know how hard people go with this stuff back right. home. And you know, the only problem we have back home is the structure. There's no structure for creators to actually thrive. You know, people make cool shit, make really dope stuff, and they never, they never really get the attention they deserve, or they never really, you know, get all the, they never get the financial benefit of making something that great. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, hopefully that's gonna change in the future. That's one of my dreams for you. And you know what, I, I wrote down something, some of your algorithms. One of the coolest things was uh, you were the first ever R- RIAA gold certified Afrobeats producer in history. Yeah. Because we were talking about history books. Yeah, of course. That, and that's, so that's like written forever. That's why we can't change that. Nobody can change it. Like that. And then also, yeah. also in, in 2018, you were the first platinum selling Nigerian record producer to be certified by the recording industry of South Africa for, for fall. Yeah. That's incredible. Grateful. <laughs> Dude, when you look, when you hear like when you hear about all those things, or when you look at these accolades, you look at that like, you know, obviously we spoke about you know your your place in history, but when you see those things, how does how does that those particular things make you feel? Yeah, I'm, I just feel blessed, you know. Mm. I'm like, okay, that's cool. Let's get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> Call up the graphic designers. More. We got come on. We got another project here ready for. Let's, more, let's go. <laughs> No, and I love that. So now, I, now I wanted to ask you about your your relationship with Davido. So y'all said yeah. you said you go back eight years. Obviously, I'm assuming towards like the beginning of when he was really starting to craft the sound. Yeah. Um. How did y'all meet, and how did y'all kind of you know come together to 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 make these hits? So me and David met through um a mutual friend who was signed to David at that time. His name is Danaga, mm. and he, Danaga and I were like we we're boys, and we we're about to just work on music. I didn't even know it was signed to David at that time. And, he just like, yo, pull up, let's work, let's work, and we're, we're cooking, and David just walked in. And at that time, I had this song that said, blow up continentally. Mm-hmm. And David just came like, ah, Kido, you produced um, Rihanna, no, 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 you're the one. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great impression, yeah, by the way. Like, that was like, really good. <laughs> that was really good. Then he was like, oh, yo, we got, we got one, we got one. I'm like, hell yeah, let's do it. You know what I'm saying? And David was just starting to blow up then. He had um, Damage Dura at that time. Yeah, yeah. was massive. You know what I'm saying? So... We started working and you know it took a while after like the first year we didn't really drop anything but like the second year we dropped two back-to-back records that just shut the whole thing down you and had like, records that were like records that people would play on the radio and be like yo i've heard this so many times turn it off but it's so good you know, fall is the king of that. <laughs> I, I really get cursed down online for fall being played in new york so much people just feel like <laughs> What? <laughs> I wasn't gonna say that it got what? played in New York like Yo. every hour, but it was played every hour in New York. Yeah, people used to tweet me like, "Yo, you tell them in New York to just slow down the airplanes too much." Like, like people love the record. <laughs> Did you, you get to mean? experience the summer in New York when when it was on the air like every hour? Um, Did you get to come out here for that? I actually flew in from. I was in South Africa when fall was the number one with Shazam. Okay. Song in states, and I was crazy. That was crazy to me because at that time I already planned. Oh. 
Mm-hmm. I've been in state for two years. I just want to go back home. So while I was on my hurry, it was number one with Shazam Shang. So I was like, what? I go on the plane, came back, to, <laughs> came back to America. And I was in Atlanta, I was like, and I was seeing the charts and it was in New York, but David was doing all the, all the radio touring and all the yeah. stuff here. So, but I, I wasn't involved with that. So I was just back in Atlanta, just trying to okay, how can we just take it to another level? What can we do? So I started finally moved to LA, you know? And I started working like Chris Brown and all these other guys. So, right. Yeah, so pretty much four kind of like opened the door for me to like, I have enough confidence to want to be in the States like permanently, you know what I'm saying? Right, because you had you yeah. had you had did some stuff on, on on his last album. I remember I was when I was scrolling through your I think I was scrolling through your gram. Yeah. And I was seeing like the charting placements and whatnot. That's incredible. Yeah. When when it came to like working with a lot of these American artists, because you know obviously uh, Boz is a frequent is someone that you work with yeah, quite right. a bit. Yeah. Um, Ray Schremer was also on there. Even like some 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 South like Hispanic artists like Becky G I believe was yeah. was one of them as well. How did you kind of start connecting with these people? Was it when you moved to Atlanta or when you got to L A? Yeah, um, it's actually a late because you know, I always tell people at least like the headquarters of the music business right. in America, you they really want to shake and move shit. You gotta be go to LA. LA, so so you know, LA, you get to meet people, you network, you you know, get sessions, cook up, you know, and Africa is getting so much love now, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. it's a good time to be there to really actually, you know, connect with these people in person, you know, there's nothing better than. That like all that sending pack stuff like I'm really not a big fan of sending packs because mm-hmm. nine times out of ten artists don't really know what to do with the packs you send or you know right. Might as well just go through them. And yeah, but it's always mm-hmm. nice to like give them like a you know just you know an idea of how to go with it like just do this try this or you know and sometimes just that little spark just creates the entire record. You know? Right, you being yeah. in the studio with them, you kind of get them. I think yeah. I think it's cool because like you can kind of. Show them the place that the record is coming yeah, from. Yeah, especially the writers, you know, writers, there's a lot of dope writers, but sometimes when you give them Afrobeats, they don't really know what to do with it. Mm. They can just sing something and then end up not using it because they don't really know how to, you know, write that. Especially American uh, artists. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, yeah, some, a lot of times you just have to, like, just tell people, like, why don't you try this? And just that phrase, why don't you try this, just leads to the entire record. You know what's really funny? So, yeah. like, when I got when I got your EPK, and, I, and I'll show you, and I'll show you this in a second. Mm-hmm. It's like it has a list of names that people you worked with, right? Yeah. And then, like, right in the middle, like, I think it's in between like Ray Schremer and somebody else. I, I gotta pull it up. Yeah. But it's like it's just right there, mad casually, just says Beyonce. Oh yeah. <laughs> like you wouldn't even like <laughs> like in between, it's in between Ray Schremer and Boz, and right yeah. underneath Cardi B. And it's just like Beyonce, yeah. <laughs> like right smack and dab in the middle. Yeah. What What did you kind of work on with her, or like what you know? What did so, you kind of do there? Beyonce record is not even out yet. It's not out yet. Yeah. So I don't. But know, but, but I don't know the word at it. You think it's all good? We'll talk about it loosely. <laughs> so so you did a record with her, but it's not out yet. Yeah, it's not out yet. So me and Michael were working on some stuff. You know, mm-hmm. I remember I was in Dubai. I just, I just got a call like, yo, it's some Beyonce stuff. You know what I'm saying? So that's pretty much as far as it gets with that. But she's not like officially put it out yet. Right. Like, All right. You know what I'm saying? Now, can I ask this? Was it was it a recent thing or was it like a long time ago? Because she did put out the Afrobeats. Yeah, no. Nah, it, it was, was not that old. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't part of that. Okay, okay. Part of that old. Yeah, no. Because I was wondering, because I was like, oh, I wonder if there was like something recently or it was something that was maybe supposed to be on that, but it would come out later on. No, no, it wasn't that. When you got <laughs> that call, what was that? What was that like? What? what? <laughs> I remember I was like, my, my head was spinning around like, what's Beyonce? What? Beyonce? <laughs> Beyonce? <laughs> you know, so, yeah, I remember I was I was about to get on a flight. Like, I was, it was like 4 a.m. in Dubai, about to, I was waiting to get on my flight like 8 a.m. in the morning. Mm-hmm. And I got that call, and my friends were there. They were like, yo, everybody was just going crazy. And we were drinking, and everybody was like, yo, pull my, pull my. <laughs> <laughs> And then, yeah. That's just that about that, yo. And I also got to ask, since we're talking about really, you know, yeah. no women in music, the Cardi B, especially because we're in New York and it's only right. Yeah. What have you, uh, what, what is the Cardi B connection that you have? I'm actually, the last time I was in New York was for a Cardi B session. Okay. And we, it was for Fall Remix. Oh, wow. Exactly. So and it never came that, out? Yeah. We, it was so crazy because we were ready to go. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was Fall was already doing numbers and everything. Was she was like tough. right there too. And she was right there when we just had it. Like, Brooklyn Johnny and I were like in New York. I don't even know if it was this studio, but it was like a penthouse studio. Mm-hmm. And we're just cooking up and then we did it. You know what I'm saying? And we were ready to go. I thought it was going to be out. And, you know. Somewhere out there, there's somewhere, somewhere out there, yeah. I heard the Lego didn't want to. Like, all that story, and I like, it's all good. We keep it moving, you know what I'm saying? So, 
Somewhere out there, some someday, <laughs> maybe like ten years from now, we'll find out that there is a. You know, we'll whatever. find out that there's like a fall. Yeah, but what's your actually posting on the social media? Like she posted the rap. The oh, song. she posted like on her story. Yeah, she got on Instagram. It's right there. She's ready. Like it was ready to go, but I don't know what happened. Right oh so, man. Yeah. Well, you know, it's all. Good. I mean, it's part of the things that happen <laughs> in the game. Remember? It's yeah. all good, but you know, since we're also talking, um, you about the creativity and, and fashion. You mentioned that you want to get more into fashion too. You're getting more into yeah. fashion. What are you doing in that? Uh, lane. Um, right now in the fashion world, I'm I'm pretty much a student right now. Okay. I'm doing a lot of learning. You know, I'm studying a lot of really, really, really dope people in the fashion scene. You know, um, um, I, I've spent a lot of money on designers. <laughs> <laughs> we were just like, looking at the Gucci shit. Like, so I, I believe. I feel it. like I need to have a stake in that business. I've spent so much. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. I've, you know, so, but right now I've been like learning a lot about how to put stuff together, how to create your own designs, mm -hmm. how to do all of that stuff. And I really want to do it on a high level. So, and I remember watching a Kanye interview where he lost so much money trying to do Yeezy at first. And I'm not trying to lose so much money. <laughs> you know? You're like, I wanted to burn out that route, but so, there's, there's a certain amount of money I want to so lose. So I learned from that, like, okay, no, I have to just chill and just start low and just start small, you know, try and create some streetwear brands for like, you know, mm -hmm. people and see how it turns out, you know, and develop and build from there. But, you know, I really want to make something really big, something really, really big. Some, like I have a few, a few designers that I really, really, really look up to, you know, like, Bottega, like, you mm -hmm. know, like, you know, Alex Studios, you know, like, um, um, there's a lot of them actually, like, yeah, but, you know, there's a lot of crazy, really, really talented, talented you know, Virgil Abloh, of course, like, Virgil. so many, so many, so many dope people, Philip Pieces is one of my favorite bands, you know, yeah, so, so many of them that I really, I've been studying and trying to see how they move around. I'm going to, you know, the next Paris Fashion Week, you know, I'm trying to just be in that space and learn more about creating, you know, clothes and materials and designs. Because I think like, you know, I, I'm really passionate about designing and creating. Obviously, yep. <laughs> so, you know, this, this phase of my life is uh, anything that I can do, I'm going to do it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Even if it's not, if it doesn't turn out to be the biggest you know, the biggest designer in the world, I just want to be up there with the biggest, like, I just want to be there, like, yeah, I want to be known, I want it to be, this kiddo design, this clothing line, and it's popping, it's hot, you know what I'm saying, so, yeah, I really want to do that. Coming soon, then. Very, very, very soon. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. All right, so aside from, obviously, the, the designing, all that, do we have any more music stuff on the way uh, yeah. that people got to know about? Yeah, of course, like, to be honest, I've already started working on my next album, very nice. And um, um, also, I'm, I'm collaborating with a lot of, you know, artists, American artists, working on different people's projects that they're really named now. It's, you know, it's not official yet. And, you know, I'm just doing more of what I've been doing and, you know, trying to do it on a bigger level, trying to create more impact, you know, trying to take Afrobeats to a whole nother level, you know, any way I can. So, yeah, that's really what I've been doing with the music right now. I was about to say, how, how do you want to take out, like, what do you think is the next step for you to take Afrobeat to, like, uh, I guess the next level? Yeah, we just need to get more people on it. We need to get more mm -hmm. people to Afrobeat, you know? People are confusing it. Like, they mean, you know, people say steal, but I don't, I don't believe in steal in the genre. No, no genre creates itself. Mm -hmm. you now, so everything was inspired by something. You yeah. Know what I'm so, people are confusing Afrobeat with a lot of stuff, you know, and I've been saying that a lot. And I feel like if we do more of that, that's really going to create, you know, room for Afrobeats to be a very big genre globally. You know? And to create new genres of Afrobeats. Yeah, you know, a lot of people can just blend new fusions and just create something out. Because Afrobeats is a very interesting genre. Like, it's the, the, the strongest power of Afrobeats is the fact that it evolves so quickly. Like, back home in Nigeria, every, every year you create, you hear a new sound. It's still Afrobeat, but it's fused with something else. Like it's new, right? You know what I'm saying? There's a new sound in South Africa called Ama Piano, and it's getting really big now. You know what I'm saying? And one of the factors that I think is going to propel it to the global market is the fusion of Afrobeat, which is what I've done with my, my past, like three records of my project. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I fused Afrobeat with that sound to just give it more attention from the people who are already tapped into Afrobeat. You know what I'm saying? They're like, oh, this is Afrobeat, boy. Sounds, it sounds soulful and like. 
You know what I'm saying? It sounds yeah. like, what's this fusion? It sounds like house, but what's this fusion? So people start asking questions before you know it, they realize what sound it is. It's a piano. Fuse the Afrobeats. You know what I'm saying? And I call it South Afrobeats, that's why I call that genre. Because I'm a pianist from the South. Right. From South Africa and, you know, Zimbabwe and all the areas. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I'm just doing a lot of that, you know, trying to put our genres on the map, trying to, you know, you know, get more artists globally to work on, to use our sounds to create their own music and see the magic that happens from that. And people don't understand, that's a cheat code. Like, if you listen to Drake's biggest song, <laughs> listen to, um, Sway Lee's biggest songs. Yeah. Loyal by um, Party Next Door and Drake. Mm -hmm. All this stuff is Afrobeat fused. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, you guys need to just tap into it. It's That's it. They even have Bad Bunny on that like, remix. You can, even, even yeah, America. you can easily get a yeah. big record off just fusing Afrobeats, just doing it right. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. That's really what I want, I want to see happening. So, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people just doing that. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Well, look, I want to thank you so much for being here with me today. This was such yeah. a great conversation. No, this is, honestly, this is one of my favorite conversations wow. over the, oh, oh, in 2021 so far because that, I feel like we had a really great conversation yeah. about the genre, and I, and, I, and I I thank you for that. Yeah, for sure. Bro. Um, Before we go, let the people know. Look into the camera. Let them know where they could follow you at. Anything else you want to let them know? Now's the time yeah. to go ahead and do it. Uh, which, which one? We're doing this one? This one right here. Yeah. So first of all, my, my new EP, Too Late, Too Late, is out now. Go and check it out on Apple Music, Spotify, everywhere. And um, you can follow me on the gram at KDDOGRAM, Keto Gram. And, um, sorry, excuse me. This is Drake's stuff. <laughs> the Drake's starting to hit a little bit. Oh, yeah. So you can follow me on the gram at KDDOGRAM, Keto Gram. Or you can follow me on Twitter at Kid Dominant. You can follow me pretty much anywhere. Just type KDDO. My handle's my gonna pop up. Just type KDDO. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. So you guys go check out my new EP, Too Late, Too Lit. It's on fire right now. Everybody's going crazy over it. You know, yeah. Let's go. That's it. <laughs> the drinks is flowing, man. Let's <laughs> get on the radar, baby. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah, thanks for having me. Pleasure, pleasure. pleasure.